Hello, and welcome back to the Expletives Included Generic Podcast, with your hosts... Does that sound cheesy, calling ourselves hosts? I guess we are technically hosts. But does it still sound cheesy? Yeah, but you know, we're a generic brand podcast, mm. what do you expect? I don't like sounding cheesy. I'm Daniel, this is Keir, and we're going to be talking at each other for an hour. Yes, directly at it one another, with lances... Through the wonder, yes, tilting at each other through the internet. Well, we could load up a game of of um joust. We could, if we went back to, like hangouts or something, could we actually like have a game of joust and just be like our faces and then joust? In theory, yeah. Because that would be pretty cool. I'd watch that. I know people have um played magic like that. Um, just with Google Hangout. Yeah. Fair enough. That could be quite interesting. Although but I don't have any deck. I don't have any decks. You don't have any decks, and I don't have the, the the chops to kind of do all these cutting edge decks that actually win at tournaments. Yeah, but you'd be facing me, the scrub of scrubs. Yeah, I, I can I can do casual. I'm 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 decent. I'm just I don't have the time to put into studying everything that lots of people well, seem to do. Don't you just copy the top eight decks and that's how you win? Yeah, but, you know, if you're going to kind of create a popular YouTube channel, then you want to be able to predict what those top eight will be, or at least one of those top eight will be, and make it before it reaches top eight. And then it's like, ooh, we need to follow this guy because that way it might not look like we're net decking. Hmm. And actually, Magic the Gathering does have a really good net pre- presence. They um, reach out to a lot of online people mm. and sort of get them involved. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I know a lot of um, groups and people who have done stuff about Magic on YouTube or over the internet and have either gone to work at or worked with wizards. I think if I was going to do anything, I'd want to maybe do writing. Even though, as... This first week has proven I'm terrible at it. We're we're now mm-hmm. at like the, at the end of the first week of. We're at seven days. Seven days. Um. Mm. So whenever this goes up, we'll. Yeah. Because we're recording in the past. Yes. We're the ghosts of Nerdum Past. Come to remind you of all those terrible '90s science fiction shows. Oh yeah, we're going to be talking about Star Trek in a bit. Terrible 90s science fiction show. But I've been reading... Uh, well, I've read one so far, but I've bought a, two or three more um, of the Magic the Gathering light novels, or pulp mm-hmm. novels, rather. And I really... It, the one that I've read was Eventide? It was one of the... It was Shadow Moor or Eventide. It was the second one of that series, I think. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was lots of fun. But as far as I know... At the moment, they don't kind of do the novels anymore. They just like sometimes write blog posts that are basically excerpts of what a novel might have been. Mm-hmm. But I, I have I, I keep so. saying that I should look into it because they might just do like e novels and just do it simply online. Quite possibly. But, I mean, or it simply is that they've just that the, the um, novels were contracted to specific agency type things because mm. um, a lot of the science fiction and fantasy writers who would write those things would also write with the, um, for other franchises, so they'd often write um, in the Star Trek or the Star Wars or the Halo or whatever franchises. So it seems they might sort of, there might be sort of companies that hire out mm. for those franchises. I don't know, maybe you could look into being a, becoming a freelancer. Maybe I could. I, You'd have to, you know, get good at writing first. I know, that, that could take a while. I'm far too busy just being an idiot on the internet to do something like that. Yeah. But, you know, there's plenty of books on writing advice out there. Mm-hmm. I went out uh, earlier this week um, and ended up in my local library, which I haven't been to before. Though I love libraries, so I just don't go out much. Mm-hmm. Um... So, I was going, looking through, and this is a small town library, you know, it's one room, maybe a dozen 
half height stacks that's um, nerd speak for shelves and there was an entire section of shelf dedicated to writing books mm -hmm. right next to the sports section which I found incredibly intimidating <laughs> Yes, because of all of those jocks who hang around libraries and read sports books. Well, It'll beat the you sports up in your general. library money. Well, you know, sports are intimidating to me. I have a lot of bad memories about sports, about the sports balls. But then I noticed the majority of them were about swords and martial arts. That sounds to be more like the kind of book reading sport overlap Venn diagram thing. Yeah. Um, from the Magic the Gathering website. I have found that the last book published was in 2010, it seems. So that's only like five years ago. Hmm. It was called Path of the Planeswalker. Hmm. They also do webcomics, it seems. Oh, yeah. Uh, they suck. I can't remember. I can't remember if I've seen... Whatever I saw definitely sucks, but I can't remember if it was like a... A scan of like a paper, like a paper comic, or whether it was a webcomic. Mm. But yeah, no, uh, no, don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they all seem to be in kind of the style of the cards, which is kind of neat. But still, mm. Magic the Gathering, well, Wizards of Coast comics gen generally are quite shit. Mm. I mean, the D and D comics are pretty bad. I haven't really looked at any of the D&D comics. I know I've seen some in, like, the local comic book shop, but... Just... I've flicked through a couple of trades. Mm -hmm. The art style just isn't that great, I don't think. It's, like, it is very generic. Also, I've never found any kind of um, version of D&D outside of playing the game itself that feels like D&D, mm. if that makes sense. Like, the movies never feel right... The video games are the closest it's come, but even then that's been not quite there. Mm. And sort of the comics and novels I've always found are just, they don't feel D&D. But they're, and they're not good enough to be proper fantasy either, in my mind. I know you like some of them. Yeah, I do. Well, I've only read like the first, I think it's like Dragons of Autumn Twilight, but I felt it was kind of, kind of D&D feely. And well, decent book. Is that the first? Is that the first of the Dragonlance yes. books? You know, you have to remember they turned Dragonlance into D and D. It wasn't made for D and D. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, what second edition did was it took um, for its out of what for its sort of some of its settings, it just took existing franchises, licensed them, and made them into settings. Hmm. Dragonlance is an example of that. Lankmar is an example of that. If I had the Wikipedia page of the second edition settings, I could tell you more. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. So you, you learn things listening to this podcast. Well, I've read the Lankmar books, and they're quite fun. Hmm. Not great, yeah, you know, they're low, low grade fantasy, but they're fun. So I suppose it's like only when. It's like pulp fantasy, I guess, is the way to say it. Hmm. And then it's like when the pulp novels of Dragonlance that were mass-produced and kind of saturated the market, that only happened after D&D was attached. Um, yes and no. Hmm. I, From what I know, there was quite a few Dragonlance books before they um, hmm. went into... Um, sort of overdrive with them. I think after it became a setting it went into open license. Mm -hmm. I remember I saw like in a charity shop the other week like a load of History of Dragonlance or something. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, they didn't seem all that interesting to me. Um, I think some of them just kind of looked at generic or kind of unusual races, but didn't... I don't know, none of them really jumped out as being all that interesting. One was around gully dwarves, which is just bizarre. Who would want to read a novel of a gully dwarf teaming up with a green dragon? 
Okay. Saying, saying like that, I don't know, that might be interesting, but no, it just, none of them really kind of seemed like, oh yeah, I should really buy this. I was only kind of tempted because it's like, it was Dragonlance. There was yeah. nothing else going for it, in, in my opinion. Um, well, Dragonlance, I'm trying to find out how many Dragonlance books there were. I think there was, there was a lot, I think. Yeah, I mean TSR did publish the novels, mm-hmm. but um, ah, here we go. Okay, um, there appear to be a fuck ton. <laughs> That's what I said. Well, the, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. Um, there's forty-four main points in it. Okay. Yeah. You know. But some of those listed are trilogies or collections. Yeah. So I'm probably looking at a hundred more books. Yeah, it's 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 quite large. Quite a large collection. Yeah. Some of these even have their own spin offs. Uh, have their own pages. Mm-hmm. Well, I imagine that the Heroes of the Lance trilogy and Tale of the Twins trilogy will be would have their own page. Mm. But uh, there's a specific section for something called what was it? What was it? Um, Age of Mortals. Mm-hmm. Uh, written by Jeff Cook. Don't know if you've seen that. Uh, what are you saying about Age of Mortals? Just that it's got its own section and seems to be right. quite a big. Uh, no, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, okay. But I'm assuming that might be like between the times when the gods left and the gods came back. <laughs> it could be anything. I haven't read any of Dragon Dragon Dra- Dra- so. Okay, so what what's our conclusion for this segment? I can't remember where we started. You went to a library. There were books. We were talking about writing. Because you said you were crap at writing, and then I said, yes. well, there's lots of books okay, so about con- writing. To conclude, I'm still crap at writing. Magic and D&D should start writing books again, rather than shitty comics. And and they should employ us to do it. Yes, once we're good. So it might be another or ten now. years. It might be another five years, rather. You know, or now, we're crap, we're on the level of these. I imagine if I had someone poking me to finish a book, I could finish it at the standard that most cheap fantasy novels are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be imaginative. It just has to be finished. It just has to be finished, yeah. Okay, so, moving on. What we were kind of wanting to talk about today, or at least what you said you wanted to talk about, was there is a new Star Trek TV series coming out. Yes, I thought this would be a good starting point for our ramblings. And I know nothing about this new series, and Keir, I think you said you know next to nothing. Because next to nothing has been said about the series. But it's it's a bit more than absolutely nothing, so so what do you know? Okay, it's slated for release 2017. Mm-hmm. So a while off yet. And it's going direct to streaming. Oh, so it's going to be like a Netflix original, or is it just what? I uh, no, it's still with CBS mm-hmm. because it's owned because Star Trek's owned by CBS Paramount. Okay. So it's likely to be in the older timeline, meaning you know that of the series and not the latest movies. Okay, is that good or bad? Do you think? Personally, I think that's good because I don't like the direction the movies has ta- have taken. I think. Isn't that basically just because they're movies and they're trying to be kind of too action-packed? Do you not think that if it was just like a TV series, like an episodic thing, it might be a bit better? I didn't like the blowing up of um, Vulcan. I didn't like what they did with Singh. With Khan, I mean. Khan, Nooney and Singh. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like the new design of the Enterprise. I don't like the fact they're all fucking children. Wait, what? Um, you don't like the fact that they're all fucking children, did you say? Yes. Okay. Come on, they're, they're, they're like our age. 
<laughs> We're not children. We we spend our weekends talking about science fiction on the internet. Dan. We're young adults. <laughs> that significantly that is definitely not children. I mean, okay, in the original show, right? Mm-hmm. In the original Star Trek show, which has its flaws, I will admit it has its flaws. Still fucking brilliant, but it has its flaws. Chekhov was twenty-five. Mm-hmm. He was an ensign. And he was the youngest person to ever come out of Star Trek Academy. Starfleet Academy, sorry. Okay? Okay. 25. In this iteration, guess how old he is? Was he 18? 16. 16? What? He's not 16. He's 16. He's supposed to be 16 in, like, the first film. Yeah. Not when he kind of comes out of... Cause does he come out... No, because he doesn't finish... Um... He didn't finish, like, Starfleet Academy, did he? No, he was... He finished the same time as Kirk. He was just no, so I mean, brilliant um, that he... Kirk, did he finish Academy? None of them technically graduated, I think. Because hmm. this... Because in the first movie there, when they're on the Enterprise, which... Why the fuck would you do this on the flagship? Mm. Um, it's meant to be their last training cruise. You know, seeing actual thing, actual missions on a functioning starship. And then things go tits up and they don't actually graduate, okay? Yeah, and somehow all the adults are killed. It's been a while since I've seen either of the films. I think I saw them once and just kind of didn't go back to them. Maybe. Pretty much the same here. I mean, they're fine action movies and actually the second one, which I saw in theatres in theatre, sorry. Um, my tongue was still messed up from supper. Sort of tingly. Um, did some cool stuff. It like showed more of Earth than just San Francisco. Mm. Which is all we ever saw in the um, previous series. I think I have heard like a lot of people complain about the Star Trek movie, saying that yeah, they're they're good action, they're just not good sci-fi, or they're good action, they're just, they're just not Star Trek. Pretty much, I mean, yeah. One of the few things that seems like Star Trek is Simon Pegg's character mm-hmm. playing Scotty, um, and he's the only think... one who isn't a child. Well. There's also Bones, who isn't a child. You know, Bones he's is... still quite young. He, he looks like he's in his 30s, as I recall. Uh, they do maybe, grizzle him yeah. up a bit. You know, that's old enough to be a doctor. Mm. Um, but actually, that kind of... Noting into this as a Scotty thing, that's actually why I've got hope for the next one, because he's involved in the writing of that one. Mm-hmm. So for the third film, Scotty's involved in the writing, so it might be a bit funnier. Possibly. I have. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. A lot of people forget the original Star Trek was quite funny. Not, mm-hmm. not sort of campy. Oh, that's awful funny. But it had it had moments of humour in it. It had. It had both. Yeah, it wasn't just do 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 daka 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 action. Mm. So anyway, the new series. The new series. As I said, mm-hmm. Let's not talk about the movies. They, they go in their own little box that we push under the desk and forget about. The new se- series, we don't know, literally all we know is it's by CBS Paramount, comes out in 2017, and is streaming. And that's so pretty that, much the extent. That's all we know. That's all we know. That's We've had the first press release. Now we can infer that because it's CBS Paramount, they'll want to use the previous timeline because they own the rights to all that law. So who made like the new films? I know we're not supposed to talk about them, but we're uh, who made the new films? They're getting out of their box. Um, what was the studio? I think it was Paramount. Paramount. Okay, but because these things work weird, the Paramount Movie Company is different from the Paramount television company mm-hmm. 
that's why it's Paramount CBS now because they've joined together. But the Paramount movie studio is still just Paramount. So they both kind of have a hold on Star Trek, but they have. That's why they kind of had to do New Universe. Yeah, basically. Mm, okay. I mean, they also wanted to reboot the franchise, but. And I think a bit of it was just Abrams like, well, I'm just going to fuck shit up because I can. So cynical. That's my thing, Dan. I know, I know. So, you think it's going to be old lore, so... Yeah, at the very least, um, sort of enterprise lore. So... Which did actually fit into proper old lore, but that's tangled. So the last like actual Star Trek series was Enterprise, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. How did that end? It got cancelled. Ah. Uh, after its third series, I want to say. So it had a decent run. Because uh, up until that point, hadn't it all been chronological? Yes. In fact, um, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager all ran concurrently. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I was wrong. It, it went for five seasons. No, I'm sorry, four seasons. Three, four, five. Five's too many. Two is not enough. Six is way out. <laughs> it was four seasons. My apologies. Mm -hmm. um, I actually own it on DVD. And that was. It, last series was 2005. So we've had like a 12 year gap. No wonder I've got the shakes. So, do you think it's going to be like another... Do you think it's going to carry on from Enterprise? Do you think it's going to carry on from DS9? Do you think... I don't know, because they've pitched a couple of other... So they've kicked around a couple of other series in the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. God, that's so long. Um, sort of dealing with the decline of the Federation, dealing with sort of um, the descendants of Kirk bringing the Enterprise back to its former glory, that kind of thing. So what kind of format did you say those were? Those were series. Um, one was going to be animated. Ah, okay. So just things other than like the, t the regular TV sh series. Hmm. I mean, they were... This is what was proposed. They never got beyond the proposition oh, okay. phase. We've had a definitive, this is going to happen from this later series, though. Okay. You know, we got this information afterwards when they were like, this is what we were going to do, but no one wanted to do it. Um, now, the one big thing we can infer from the statement that CBS Paramount has made is it's going to have a much lower budget than the other series. A lower budget than... Yeah. Well, relatively speaking. Accounting for inflation and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Because it's streaming only. Um, original Star Trek had quite a, quite a low budget, didn't it? I don't actually know its budget, but I'm well, pretty sure... Vulcans were going to have tails, I think. But that was that was too expensive. Uh, no, they decided it looked too satanic. I heard that it was because it was too expensive. Well, you remember the um, transporter effect? Do you know how that was done? No. Turning a jar of bitter upside down. Cause that's that that's quite a cheap. Uh... That's how you did it back in the day. You, you know, if you wanted soft focus, you slapped Vaseline on the lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they didn't have the money because they had a horrible budget. <laughs> yeah, but the budget's going to be low because CBS is a cable company and they want to put the main focus on cable. Mm -hmm. You know, if this was done by Netflix, we could expect quite a big budget, relatively speaking. Relatively speaking. So, there's sort of a lot of speculation going around that they might go for a continual series instead of the traditional episodic. Each episode leads into the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I'm totally up for. I think it'll be a really good thing. 
Um, I don't know. I've, I can't think of any kind of series that like that that I've. I don't know, because they all like have like an overarching story, don't they? But it's still episodic. I can't think of anything that is purely to be continued kind of thing. Twenty four. Twenty four. I never watched that. Um. Well, Battlestar is kind of that. I watched that years ago. Yeah. Over a decade ago, possibly. Possibly. Um. I mean. Well. You have to remember in Next Gen, particularly, there was no continuity, basically. They had kind of returning themes and stuff, I guess, but no. I mean, DS9 would occasionally revisit the same plot thread. Mm -hmm. And stuff did change with characters. How would you explain Voyager, then? Best left so <laughs> the less said the better. Well, no, because would you say there was kind of episodic, or... Oh yeah, it was very much episodic. But there was always like the same story, they're always kind of going closer and closer to home. Yeah. Now there's a reason why that was episodic. Mm -hmm. Voyager was the first Star Trek series to accept fan scripts. Is that why we had Seven of Nine? No, that was a studio thing. Um, they never let fans introduce characters other than one-offs. Mm -hmm. But in So they would never have a Colonel Mary Sue. Oh. Mary Sue is a natural thing. Hmm? Mary Sue is from Star Trek. You do know that. I thought it was a fan fiction. Yeah, based on Star Trek. Yeah. That's where it comes yeah. from. But anyway. So I'm um, saying there wasn't a Mary Sue in like actual Star Trek. It remained well, in the sphere of it, I mean, fanfic. Depending how you want to look at Cass, maybe. Cass. Which one was Cass? The small alien from season one and two of Voyager. See the, the Jeff. What the Jeff? No, no, that's Neelix. I don't remember any other short aliens. Kess was Neelix's girlfriend. Mhm. Mm Somehow Neelix got a girlfriend. And yet we're still single. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was sort of tiny and cute. I don't remember her at all. I'm incredibly lovable. And then she got mind powers. Okay. And then she kind of disappeared. Okay. Then she came back to fuck up the Enterprise. <laughs> and we're back. A little bit of a technical issue. We so, were attacked by the Kira, Borg. I believe. We were Say attacked again? by the Borg, it's fine. That's the only logical explanation. Well, you know, it's not like the Vulcans would attack. That would be illogical. Um, so yes, you were saying about Neelix having prolonged sex with Vox or something. With Kesp, yeah. Like, it went on for days, it was horrible. Was that her revenge on the Enterprise? Was that when she came back to destroy everything? No, no, that's when she wanted a child. Okay. Yeah, because her... But she didn't get a child and that made her go crazy? No, that came later when she gained her mind powers. Um, mm. Yeah, basically her species shouldn't exist. They only mm -hmm. live for like ten years. So she was a three-year-old. Hmm. And they only get to breed once in that time. But they have multiple offspring? No. Just, the, Just one. the one. Well, I think it's possible to have twins, but... It's the only way that the species could survive. Pretty much, yeah. Or if they kind of... Well, no, because they couldn't just kind of breed with other races, because then... The race would be diluted. Hey, it would be diluted and also... Well, you wouldn't kind of, unless you were in like a two species planet to begin with, mm. then where would they come from? Yeah. I mean, it's. The whole situation with that race was weird. Mm. And then, like, they meet up with another bunch of that species, and it's like they all have mind powers and they all live for hundreds of years. Rather than just yeah. ten. 
It should be noted okay. that the people on with Kester's planet didn't normally develop mind powers. I don't even know what I what. Yeah. I don't know. But, I, I would have to watch Voyager to understand. I think. Really, we should have got Lorian on this. He's, well, he's definitely a lot more Star Trek than mm. I am. But anyway, so. Well, actually, that's why it's good that you're here, because you can give that modern, youthful, hip um, opinion. What would you? What would get you to watch a new Star Trek series other than me bugging you about it? Ooh, now that's an interesting question. Because it involves you. Because it involves me. I would say probably Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, no. He's uh, busy filming God's Not Dead 2. <laughs> the, the Return. Oh, God's Not Dead, The Second Coming. I don't know, something like you know, that. Um, God's Not Dead so, 2, Electric Boogaloo. That, 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 yeah, I, I could watch that. I'd be like Footloose, but with Jesus. <laughs> they go to a roller disco. And, and dance for Jesus? I don't know. Dance for Jesus, dance! Because... Get down with your funky self for the Lord! I did like Star Trek, um, but I, and I would always watch it when I was on when it was on TV when I was younger. But I didn't kind of develop the same obsession that lots of people I know did. Mm -hmm. So I'm not kind of. If a new series did come out, then I think it would be pretty cool. But I'd also kind of feel a bit meh about it. It's not really. It's not your thing. I'm not sure. It's, TV isn't really my thing. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there are lots of like TV shows and like I guess Netflix originals if we class them differently that everyone kind of came, kind of says, oh yes, you really need to watch that, and I just kind of don't get around to it because it's not kind of what I'm into. So basically, but... you're saying if it was a cartoon, you'd watch it. Even then, probably not, because there is a Star Trek cartoon that I've just c completely ignored. Well, it was made in the '60s, mm -hmm. though it is really good. Um, even if it was a cartoon, probably not. And if it was an anime, then I just don't see it as... That, hmm. that would be mildly horrifying, to be honest. Yeah, I just don't see it working. I don't think that would work at all. Well, they'd make Kirk some dare. No, sorry, um, they'd make Spock some dare for Kirk to begin with. No one would do that. Notice me, Captain Senpai. <laughs> no, that, no, just no. Don't, don't even joke about that kind of thing. That's just... <laughs> Khan Chan, <laughs> you are a mighty opponent, Khan Chan. I honor your friendship. Uh, uh, no. Um, though Sulu would remain the best character with his fencing, shirtless fencing. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes. Yeah, you still don't have the voice down. I was just going creepy, not decay. Okay. That's why it didn't work. Well, so, he just says, oh my. Well, he says, hmm? just says, oh my, not oh my, yes. Yeah, so... So yeah, I was just going... Why would you... Why would you be talking about Sulu, and then say something which begins, oh my, and I just... Just forget it, Kay. Because I was trying to lure um, him into bed. So, what would get me to watch? Um, Other than a ten-foot pole poking you in the star, <laughs> in the um, temple. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, I just... You just want Firefly no. again. That is not what I was thinking. Um, ten years and I down. definitely wasn't thinking about Nathan Fillion. Um, Nathan Fillion and K. No. Um, well, they'd make a, re a great couple. Think of the children, man. I don't think man. Nathan Fillion's gay. Hmm? I don't think Nathan Fillion is gay. I don't think George Takei is married. Is I think he's got a life partner. Not he sure. He'll be married, actually. Yeah. 
I know Stephen um, Fry's married now. Yep. To a, uh, but that's neither here nor there. To a much younger man. That's neither here nor there. So I think I would kind of. It would have to be kind of less actiony mm-hmm. than like the films. I just do want like another. I guess just make it like a modernized form of the old Star Trek, so that it is kind of more about diplomacy than blowing shit up, but not so that it's boring. So you want next gen again? I guess Star Trek. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no to another Doctor Crusher. I wouldn't say. I would say no to another Wesley Crusher. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to another Ca- Jean Luc Picard. <laughs> oh no, that's what we need to do. That's what would get people to watch. We need to get um, what's Patrick his face? Stewart. Not Patrick Stewart. Whoever played Wesley. Oh, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. We need to get Will Wheaton back as a captain. <laughs> but he didn't join Starfleet. I thought he did. No, he didn't finish his time in the academy, and he joined up with the Wanderer, and is exploring the multiverse. Oh, but then doesn't he come back? No. Well, he does technically, but that's just because he has an unspeaking cameo in one of the movies. I don't remember. I'm I'm not sure if I got to the part where the Wanderer comes back, but I'm sure that I that. So was he just like no? Because he wouldn't have been an ensign. Because if he was an ensign, then he would have graduated, wouldn't he? Yeah. Um. I know. But I'm fairly sure he did get the rank of ensign. I know he was acting ensign. Yeah, but when he was acting Ensign, he wasn't... He was just wearing his grey oh, yeah. jumper thing. He did actually, at some point, mm. wear the uniform. I guess he did. Then he must have resigned his commission. Hmm. So I guess he could be recalled in time of war. Or he could just kind of finish his time wandering with the Wanderer. I mean, I guess he's technically immortal. <laughs> Wait, the Wanderer's immortal, or Wesley's immortal? Well, when you exist out of time, surely you're technically immortal. Mm. And, you know, he gained that ability because he was good with math. Your phone agrees. <laughs> yes, my phone agrees with the, uh, with Captain Crusher. <laughs> yeah, she's be pretty cool. And, like, everyone who meets him thinks he's going to be a real hard ass because of the name. And he's like, mm-hmm. no, no, I, I actually prefer a non violent solution to all my problems. Would you mm-hmm. would you like a bottle of craft brewed beer? Yeah, that that's what I want. I want Crusher. I want Wesley Crusher to come back and be a Starfleet captain. But he's still totally Will Wheaton. I don't know. Um, because he was he was very annoying. Well, Wesley was yeah, but Will's totally chill. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's still quite annoying, but you know. You've just you've just um, got a raging hate boner for SJWs. Yes, <laughs> but we don't talk about politics on this show. Are SJWs really politics? On the internet, I think it kind of is. It, it's internet politics. Is Tumblr really politics? When it bleeds out of Tumblr. <laughs> well, when that happens, 4chan attacks. Yeah, I can't be on the side of 4chan. I don't know. See, it's all it's all messy and political. I don't know, 4chan did some real good recently. Well, not real good, but you know, something pro- um, politically... Didn't they just, like, dox a lot of people recently or something? Oh yeah, they doxed the Ku Klux yeah. Klan. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. You have to admit. I don't know. It's like, oh yeah, these people have probably been indoctrinated by their parents to believe fucked up things let's harass them until they think right a number of them were senators and mayors okay see it's politics it's difficult what to side against the clan well have any of them ever actually lynched anyone who knows well some if they've done actual lynching, then no, it's not difficult to side against them. Well, I, I don't know, I don't follow that news, but, you know, I'm 
I know there have been a number of attacks recently by the clan, as in for the last five years. Okay, and like those people, yeah. Like just... cross burnings and shit. Oh shit. Yeah. But, I don't know, because if you are like senator, then you can like be, I don't know, I guess part of the clan and have all of these messed up ideas, but not actually go around burning people. Yes, but surely they have these messed up ideas is important if they're in office. Let's get back to Star Trek, because this is, this is a conversation that's going to take a while. Mm. So, yeah. Captain, so, so, Captain Crusher... Mm-hmm. Captain Crusher... Do you think you should still be on the Enterprise? Or maybe you're like on a science vessel. I think he should totally be on the si- on the flagship of the USS. Of the USS? Well, the United oh, Federation of Planets. The Starfleet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I think he should... What is it? Um, yeah, I think there should be a new war with a new race or something. Uh, and Crusher should be leading the... the the assault. And the whole way there, he's like, I am not a military tactician. I am a diplomat. Just because I'm called Crusher. No, that's far too whiny. That's far too Wesley. Does no one read my record around here? Mm-hmm. So, you want a new threat to come in? Possibly. Well, let's see, we've had the Alpha Quadrant the Beta Quadrant, Gamma Quadrant, and the Delta Quadrant. Are we missing a Quadrant? I don't think so. Hmm. Well, the Beta Quadrant is Romulans. Um, I don't think the Borg should come back. I think the Borg are kind of done. They had, Mm. like, 15 movies, most of Voyager... They are, but sometimes they. I just. I wouldn't be surprised if they just thought, "Ah, we need an enemy. Who can we fall back on?" I don't. I don't know. Borg traveled through time and came back. And, and there's arr- something I definitely want. Don't want in this new series is time travel. It happens so often. Yeah, but I'm sick to death of it because they never do it well. Ooh, I want a new Q. What's wrong with the old Q? We could have the old Q. We could have John Delancey and Wesley. <laughs> I'm just. No, I want Q to be captain. No, I want. No, I want Wesley to. I want two vessels. I want two Starfleet vessels. I want Q to be captain of one and Wesley to be captain of the other. Wesley can be like a diplomat or scientific vessel. Uh, Q can. Be Q. Maybe have. Be hmm? Q. Q can be Q. Q can have whatever vessel he wants. Manned. In fact, he will have whatever vessel he wants. He can have the Enterprise, and I think, hmm, actually, I don't feel like the Enterprise today. Let's have something else. <laughs> and he can just change it. And is manned entirely by Qs? No, just, he's the only Q. You know, they're all him, though. Okay, so, do you mean a spaceship entirely of Qs, or a spaceship entirely of Q? Who is a Q? Yeah, the latter. The latter. Just as long as we don't get any female Q this time. That then gives birth to a baby Q. I don't remember that. Yeah, that happened. I just seem to have the... Actually... No, it's hard to remember what actually happened and what with, with Q. Q had a baby with Lady Q, and then that baby Q was really annoying, and Janeway sent him to his room. Mm-hmm. And then it was never mentioned again. I thought Q liked a human lady. Yeah. He banged the shit out of her. But she wouldn't have given birth to Q, baby. No. He he had sex with a female Q. There's more than one Q. Yeah, no, there's plenty of Qs. 
But there's only one Q. Yeah. Because that... that doesn't get confusing yeah. at all. And then there was that episode where there was that Q who wanted to commit suicide. I didn't see that one. Yeah, that was a weird episode. Because... So they can't? Because they're kind of immortal, but then they also can do anything. Mm. Yeah, that's the god problem. Can he make a rock even he can't pick up? Mm. Yeah, so this was... This is a Q who was imprisoned in like an ice asteroid for eternity because he wanted to kill himself. Mm-hmm. And then I think the compromise they made in the end was they turned him mortal. So that he would die eventually. Yeah. Okay. And I think they turned Q proper Q mortal once or twice. Mm-hmm. Just the, the shits and Pretty giggles. Much. But, you know, we all remember that scene. That brilliant scene. Where Q and Picard woke up in bed together. Mm-hmm. Such a good scene. Uh, I'm, I'm gl- kind of glad we didn't see the scene of the night before. <laughs> How drunk did Picard get? <laughs> <laughs> so drunk. So very, very yeah. drunk. So, you want Q in the new series? I kind of like, I kind of like the idea of there being two ships that we follow mm-hmm. that are actually journeying together. Okay, does that happen at all in Starfleet? Not really. The way they design the ships is sort of they're meant to be able to hold the line until things are needed. Hmm. So they just send out single vessels to patrol areas. Unless they're science vessels, then they go to do one thing and deal with that. And then another class of ship will come if there's a problem. Okay, so what if it is a fleet of ships then, rather than just two? If it's a fleet, then they're on military manoeuvres. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're sort of dealing with a Deep Space Nine situation. Mm, which we don't want, oh. I think. Some people don't want I it. liked Deep Space Nine. I think it's the best series. Not many people... Well, I think most people are... Kind of, well, don't follow that idea. Because they're wrong. Because they're wrong. You know, it had the most continuity, had the most interesting characters, had the best spaceship fights. Admittedly, the villains were a tad lackluster. Mm. And you had, um... That one guy. Actually, you had several of that one guy. Doesn't narrow it down much. (laughs) You know. Um, the, well, I was like, is it's not Quark? It's like the same, like the main one of that race. You mean Quark? Was it Quark? Was he like the main yeah, one? Yeah, he was the main guy. What's his brother, cousin? Quark? Oh, his brother. Uh... Oh shit! I should know this. I don't know. I just remember he was he was that guy. Yeah. And then when I yeah, then it was also his son who was really that guy. <laughs> Yeah, and then there was the shapeshifter... Odo. Like, security, Odo. He was kind of that guy. He, he actually got a lot better in later seasons. Mm-hmm. You know, he... Admittedly, it did get a bit boring when I was like, he's solid, he's not, he's solid, he's not. He's fucking Kira. Go them. Mm. I mean, O'Brien. Chief O'Brien and Chief Bashir. I, I, like, I liked Chief O'Brien. I think their bromance was comparable to JD and Turk. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. Well, you know, it it was, it was really good. You know, you could see Chief O'Brien leaving his wife, for Chief for um for Bashir. Um. Well, we all have our own head cannon. I don't believe that that happened. I just think that Miles at night would sometimes dream of it. Mm-hmm. You know, well. You don't think it would happen, but if it did, then you wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah, it was, it's one of those. It's the kind of thing where Miles is awake at night because one of his kids is crying. And he's just like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have to deal with this if I was with Julian. You've thought about this too much. I've watched a lot of Star Trek in my time. And then, of course, you have one of the best captains ever. Mm-hmm. Motherfucking Avery Brooks. He punched Q. Yeah. Not only that... He 
<laughs> he pretended to be a Klingon and out Klingon to the Klingons. I haven't seen that episode. It's awesome. He out Klingon to Klingons. And then you have the return of Worf, where his character gets the most character development. Doesn't he write poetry? Yeah, but... I think I've seen an episode where he writes poetry. Klingons are meant to do that. They meant to do that, but he he wasn't good at it. No. He also gets married, falls in love. Yeah, exactly. That's why he was writing poetry. Mm. Turns out he's a total woman. He's been planning his wedding since he was a child. <laughs> <laughs> Picking out the candles, the cake. Uh, I would love to have just seen seen the wedding and just hear him say, "It's like I am a merry man." <laughs> I can't remember the wedding episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they make that joke. I would be disappointed if they didn't. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a solid cast. So, yeah, I, I think that's that's what would get me to watch. I think we need to get Wesley Crusher mm -hmm. back, and we need to kind of get him to... And we need a couple of Q episodes mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think we need a really solid cast. I think it's best if we, given the smaller scale of this proposed series, I think a science vessel is the way to go. If you do one in space. Because mm -hmm. one idea that's been floating around for a while now is um, Tales of the Federation. Mm -hmm. Which is sort of like a, an anthology show where they do different stories from different parts of the Federation with different races each episode. I'm not sure if that would work as well. It's an interesting idea, but if you're bringing it back after like 10, 12 years, yeah. um, that's kind of like a thing that you do. Like, if this gets popular, then it's something which you do like on the side as well as well, you have to remember this, like, proper Star Trek season rather than mm, just its own we thing. We have to remember this is coming along pretty much when the movie comes out. But it's like completely different universe as well. That's, the, that's my speculation. I think it's a fair assumption. Mm. Um, maybe they'll do like a, it as web episodes or something. That might be something if they still do that kind of thing. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think it needs to be a bit smaller scale and focus on like a smaller number of crew, or at least a smaller vessel. So that's something that always annoyed me. We never got to know the background characters that well. So there are all these people in the background. What are you doing today? No job. Carry on with it. Oh. No, we need we need Wesley Crusher, and he's the only one on the starship. And he's slow, going slowly insane <laughs> as the series goes yeah. on. Until suddenly he starts, in like the final episode, he starts talking to the ca the crew of the Enterprise Ooh. as if they're there, but they're not. That would be a fun matter episode. Or... He starts pretending to be them. So he talks to them, and then he replies in their voice. I imagine Will Wheaton would be totally up for doing that as well. He would be up for it, yeah. Though, there is another bit of Star Trek news. Mm -hmm. There was a parody novel of Star Trek called Red Shirts that came out a while ago. Okay. Now that has got a movie that's coming out probably around the same time. An official movie? Yep. Interesting. Yep, I'm. Have you read this I novel? I have. Is it is it good? Is it oh, funny? Wait, no, is it I was wrong. Interesting. Thought provoking. It's a TV series. Mm -hmm. Um. It's um, an all right novel. I mean, it's it doesn't. It sometimes falls into that trap of. Here's the, um, here, you know, here's the cliche. Isn't it funny? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's not really. But always that greater thing to kind of go on for a while. Yeah, and it's sort of, it gets very meta. Deliberately. Mm. So like, the idea behind the novel is it's set in. A universe of a Star Trek like show mm -hmm. that actually works by the rules of Star Trek but is sort of also aware that it's a show 
and there's this the first half of this book is a conspir is the conspiracy that it is a show. So like this ensign comes to work for the science department and what the science department does is they have a box. And that will give the answer when it's narratively convenient. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun read, but it's it's one of those books that have one of those nerd books that have come out in the last few years that I've sort of that have people have really hyped, uh, like um, Ready Player One. That I've read, and I just think they're so flawed. Yeah. But that's coming to a TV show, to a TV series soon, I believe. No, I don't think I'll watch that one. I think it's meant to be more of a comedy. It, it sounds like it definitely is, but mm. I don't know. It doesn't sound like what I can do. Yeah. yeah, they also do that thing where they go into the real world. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not watching that. <laughs> Yeah, that's when the book hits a grinding, screeching halt, and it's just like, oh, so we're going to do that, this for the next hundred pages. Uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I stuck through. You know, the characters were likeable enough by that point that you stayed with it to see if, if they wouldn't die. Okay. Or in one case, would die. Yeah. Because they were wearing a red shirt, well, of they course. they all were. Okay. They're all red shirts. That's the point. Fair enough. And then they, like, the conclusion of the novel is they force the writers of the show to up their game and make it a decent series and not rely on the same tropes. Didn't you, did, but... <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, they do some really cool stuff with it, like, um... The opening scene is really good. It's like that classic scene where it's sort of, No, we can't go into the cave, there are sandworms! It'll kill you instantly, and then. But this is all from the um, narrative position of one of this, these red shirts, mm -hmm. and sort of, he's on this rock, and the captain character's like, "Don't move! The sandworms will eat you," and he's like, "No, of course I can't do the, do that because it will really disappoint my father." Uh, and it's like he's suddenly gaining these memories as it's being written for him, and then he does this. Then he eventually runs out that um. He's the son of an admiral who's friends of the captain and sort of all that kind of emotional stuff you'd get in an episode. But it's sort of all mm -hmm. being given to him as it would be gi given by a writer. It, re I'm not describing it well, but it sort of reads really interestingly. But then kind of the book itself doesn't follow up. Okay. I'm still not kind of. I'm still not sold on it. I don't think it's going to be a good series. I. Uh, it, it, who knows? Maybe it will be. Maybe it will get traction, and maybe people will poke me with ten foot poles to kind of watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Um, well, you know, it, the book is well liked. You know, it's considered one of the top ten nerd novels of the last twenty years or something. Mm -hmm. But then again, so is well. Loading ready. Loading player one is considered one of the best. Is considered one of the the best nerd novels ever. That's an incredibly flawed book. Right. I don't think we've got anything else to say. That Star Trek no. I mean, no. I can just talk on about other stuff. No, let's call it a night. Let's let's end this podcast here. I okay. Think. We've come up to about an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for listening. Uh, maybe you share our ideas of what the new Star Trek series should be. If you're correct, then you will. But, but you know, if you're wrong, say so in the comments. And I'll mock you for that. And we'll all find out eventually, in about a year and a half. When we'll maybe. all have forgotten this episode. <laughs> we'll all have forgotten. Um... But if it does turn out that it's just Wesley Crusher going around space, then we totally called it, and we'll sue. Yeah? Well, no. Because it was... They would have obviously have watched this podcast, stolen the idea, and written it all about that. <laughs> yes, and... 
but would we really want that to end if we sued them? No, because they already don't have a lot of exactly. money. Exactly, and you know, Will Wheaton costs a lot. Does he? Well, you know, it's like a bag of Cheetos and a six pack of beer for it to get Will Wheaton to do something for you. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you all for listening. We've been ex- expletives included. We'll see you all next week. Yes. Good night. Good night. <laughs>